correct. Um, and then if, you know, if that fails, we would go towards an operative, inter operative intervention. And the operative choices are, are, the, are the open dislocation, where you have to actually make a big six to 10 inch incision on the hip and uh, dislocate the hip and then treat the problem that way. Or you, we can now do it arthroscopically. And this arthroscopic developments has gone on really to widespread use over the last four or five years. Uh, we've got now the technology where we can, where our instrumentation is advanced enough where we can get in the hip easier and treat many different problems that uh, almost all of which can be treated with the scope uh, as opposed to the open procedure. It is a term we hear often, uh, oftentimes referred to uh, uh, in the discussion of athletes and their injuries, but what is arthroscopy and exactly what is hip arthroscopy? Arthroscopy means where we're looking into the joint um, with small instruments as opposed to a big incision. Now we're making uh, one incision, and basically these instruments are about the size of a number two yellow pencil. They're about that big. And we make a small uh, one centimeter incision to put the instrument in, and then another, in another portal we call them another incision to get our instrument, our working instrument in. And we can switch back and forth between the two. And so we put these instruments into the hip, and one is a camera, and one is, the, like I said, the working instrument. And so uh, we can do what we need to do inside the hip uh, using this technology. Are you ever using the camera uh, as the other piece of the, um, the, the chopstick, for example? Can you do everything you need with just the one instrument? Or sometimes, are you, I, I was always curious, or can you use the other piece to move something around? Can you ever use the camera itself as an instrument? aiding you in the surgery beyond just showing you what it is that you're looking at? A little bit, a little bit in the hip. We can kind of use it as a, as a retractor mm -hmm. um, a little bit, but mostly it's, it's the working portal that's what you're working through. Okay. Talk to me about the specialized training that is required because this is a specialized surgery. It's, it is a somewhat specialized surgery that not everybody does and, and you need to be able to, uh, to have experience of, of going into the hips uh, because it's not like um, it, it's not like the shoulder or, or the knee, it's different. And typically places that uh, have a high volume, not many places have a high volume of this, and usually it's one or two places in a, in a city that you get a high amount of uh, uh, volume in terms of patients that have this Looking problem. at two pictures here, one is a normal labrum and a torn labrum. Can you talk about the differences between the two? The, uh, the normal labrum there marked in the, marked in the red on the left um, is a nice smooth sort of band of fibrous tissue that surrounds the socket. Now on the right you can see the arrow pointing to the torn tissue and that torn tissue is, is going to cause abnormal friction and irritation inside the joint uh, in the ball and socket joint and that's where you're going to get your pain and that's where you're going to get your reaction, reactive inflammation inside the hip joint. Talk to us about the conditions that can be treated with hip arthroscopy. Uh, loose bodies, where you have some loose fragments inside the hip, is the classic, is the classic uh, and original uh, uh, problem that was, hip arthroscopy was used for. Um, and now we can treat uh, labral tears. We can actually not, just, not only just clean them up, but we can actually fix them, and we can actually repair them. Uh, also, we can fix uh, when the ball and socket are out of round. We can actually trim down the bone of the ball, and we can also actually, sometimes you get an overhang of the socket, and we can actually trim that, on, trim that down as well. Um, uh, as well as some other minor things, but those are the most common ones. Okay. Has arthroscopy, um, is, it being, is it able to treat arthritis? Because that's a question people are probably asking themselves. Yeah, and it's, it's actually, arthroscopy is the treatment before you get arthritis. Once you get to significant arthritis where your joint space and the cartilage is, is narrowed significantly, uh, arthroscopy has less of a benefit, and it's more, it's more of a benefit for before you get to that point. Okay. The next thing we're going to discuss is FAI, and it's much easier for me to say than the full name, which you're going to give me. Uh, what exactly is FAI, and how does it correspond to relate to tonight's discussion? FAI, Tom, means femoroacetabular impingement. And what that means is, as we mentioned before, it's the ball and the socket being out of congruency. So the ball can either have a bump, which in this picture shows the, the the ball of the femoral head is gotten out of round, and that, if you can imagine an out of round ball articulating with a round socket, that's going to be some abnormal friction in there, and that's, and that's what's, what happens, is that abnormal bump is hitting into the cartilage in the labrum uh, at certain points during specific motions, um, and this can get exacerbated by repetitive motion, for example, in a baseball player twisting or, or a, a ballet dancer dancing, um, mm -hmm. hockey players. Um, it's, uh, so once this ball is, is hitting the, is the, 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 the ball is hitting the cartilage, it can damage it, and it can also damage the labrum. 
The other, the other type of problem is the pincer impingement where the socket can overhang the cup abnormally. And if you can imagine uh, the, the overhang hanging, bumping into the, uh, the uh, femoral head articulating, and that's the pincer impingement. And usually there's a mixture of this combination of the two of these. What would this feel like? Can you describe how, how people describe the pain associated with these two conditions? Typically, Tom, people will have groin pain. It's, they'll point either to the groin or they'll point either to the sort of, uh, they'll grab their outside of their leg and say it hurts, it's hurt, it hurts here. They'll have problems with twisting type motions as well as uh, accelerating. But, but different from a groin pull. Correct. Right, and what would, what would, how would, the, what would the difference in feel be from a groin pull? A uh, groin pull will be more towards the center of the leg. Um, this will be more a deep type ache uh, inside the joint. Okay. And is this something that would typically happen um, over time where the, where the pain would get worse or you would wake up one morning and your, your, your ball is out of round? Uh, it's, it's usually more of one of two things. It's either over time during a repetitive type event uh, for example, like I mentioned before, like a baseball player twisting, uh, all of a sudden it's going to hurt him when he's doing that. And he'll say one time, he'll say, ow, it, it hurts. And then that, that'll be the sort of beginning of the downward spiral. Um, and typically you won't wake up with it. It's usually during an activity where it's bothersome. But, it, but you could go from no pain to a lot of pain? Or would you, in, in that activity, go, you know, that just didn't feel right? And then, and then over time, the condition worsens. You can go from no pain to a lot of pain if you tear your labrum right away. Um, and this problem can be in your hip for a long time, and all of a sudden... Just not know it. Correct. You wouldn't know it, but all of a sudden, you, once, once the um, damage has gotten great enough so that you can feel it, you'll start feeling it. Mm. Well, what does the surgery for FAI involve? And this is where we're going to take people into the operating room. So the surgery for FAI involves um, trimming down the bump that we talked about, so the picture on, on the left shows the bump in the, in the red circle, and that normally shouldn't be a, a convex surface. It should be a concave surface like it is on the right. If you can imagine, um, the surface on the right is a, is a nice slope uh, as opposed to, the, to a conca convex surface on the right um, that was resected. Now that, those, those sort of, the area where the, uh, the, uh, the yellowish area is where we've taken off that huge bump uh, that was there, and you can see the burr actually in the background, which is a five millimeter burr that we uh, go inside the hip. And before with. we get to the surgery, what is the instrument you're using? What, what's inside of that joint that you're using? That is actually that. That's actually a burr. That's a five millimeter burr that that is moving really quick, uh, and it basically just grinds down the bone. And then it has also we have a suction device attached so that the little bone uh, pieces and particles are sucked out, so we can also see and, and also to get them out of the, out of the joint patient awake during the surgery or, or typically not? Typically not, it's general anesthesia. General anesthesia, yeah. okay. Well, let's, uh, sometimes I'll have to warn our viewers uh, that what you're about to see, you, you may not want to or if you're squeamish, but this one I think most people are gonna be fine with. And we're looking, we're seeing exactly what you're seeing, right? Yeah. In, into that small camera that's inserted into the hip. That's exactly right. When, what we're seeing is, is on a monitor and this is inside the hip and uh, the labrum, which is the crescentic area uh, going across the screen, that's the labor moving back and forth. And what we're doing right now with the hip is we're actually moving it. We're, f we're flexing it at the hip, we're bending the hip, and we're actually turning it inside and out to test uh, if our resection is adequate. So we're doing a dynamic examination inside the operating room while after we've done a resection to make sure that there's no more impingement. There's no more of that bump hitting into that labrum. Uh, You're physically anymore. moving the patient around while, while the patient's sleeping. Correct. So uh, it, it, would you typically have more people in one of your surgeries because you have, you know, the nurse who may be able to hand you the scalpel and everything else, you're, you're, you're going to have people that if, if you've got a, an athlete there of 200 plus pounds, you're physically, physically yeah. moving the patient during the operation. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got an operating room team that, uh, you know, it's, as we know, all, many things in life are a team effort, and this certainly mm -hmm. is one. Um, and uh, I think it's pretty cool to be able to, to be able to treat this with just two small incisions. I think it's pretty neat. Okay. About how long, as we continue to look at the surgery here, about how long would this surgery take? If you're just cleaning a labrum, uh, it'll take typically less than an hour, but if you have to do a significant amount of bony work, it can take anywhere from uh, two hours to three hours. Wow. Do you have any idea from x-rays what you're going to see when, when you get in? How often are you surprised by what you've seen ahead of time to what's actually inside of the hip bone? Uh, typically, we know joint. a lot of what we want to do with, with x-rays, um, and uh, MRI will sort of confirm what we need to do. 
Okay. What an M do you use MRIs? Does that give you a better picture than a, than a normal X-ray would?